What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, uh, I'm just going to quickly review the newest Pokemon TCG Live update. Uh, this was a letter to the community from Pokemon uh, from TPCI on October 11th regarding Pokemon TCG Live. If you don't know what Pokemon TCG Live is, it is the uh, soon-to-be new way to play Pokemon trading card game online as opposed to PTCGO, which we've had since roughly 2011. Uh, quick uh, recap and short history. Pokemon TCG Live was announced to come out in late 2021, and then instead it came out as an early beta in 2022, and the game looked and played pretty horribly, and there's been a lot of negative feedback. The good news is they did ask for surveys, or they sent out surveys and asked for feedback from the people who have been playing it already, and this is partially regarding those surveys. So let's read this. Dear Pokemon TCG fans, today we are excited to share more about the updates and changes coming this year to Pokemon TCG Live. In August, we shared a survey with everyone who played the Pokemon TCG Live Limited Beta to help us in our ongoing efforts to better understand player impressions of the game's current state. Today, we'd like to provide insight into some of the common themes you shared with us as part of the survey. So these are the qualitative things that they gathered across the surveys. Players liked uh, crafting, daily quests, and battle pass content. Players found the gameplay to be strategic and clear. This part, I don't even understand why it was on there, because this, this has to do with the trading card game, not like the uh, medium we're using, right? I guess the clear part could have to do with the medium, but players found the gameplay to be strategic and clear. Players found matchmaking was too slow and some players experienced numerous bugs. Players disliked the pace of receiving progression rewards and the difficulty of finding cards in their collection. Players disliked the art style, including avatar, board design, and overall user interface. So they took these really big uh negative feedback points especially players just dislike the art overall um and let's just take all this at face value for now while we're reading it uh we'd like to thank everyone who took the time to share their thoughts with us they are critical to the development of pokemon tcg live we've identified and prioritized all of the issues described and your feedback helps us continue adjust and iterating on the many ways we can optimize the experience for all players with today's update the visuals and board layout changes previewed in our last letter are now live with this new design in place we're excited to show off some new visual visualization visualizations visualizations let's say it all together that will that word tripped me up i don't know why some new visualizations that will use the background to display various energy types when pokemon are played these animations will replace the existing ones currently in game with plans to add more background effects in future updates here are just a few of the new animations we're looking to implement before the end of the year so this uh is kind of promising a lot i think and i hope they deliver on it so here's a preview video of the new animations they plan to uh give to us let me make sure i'm capturing desktop audio here because i think there's some volume oh no there's not volume so these are pretty cool let's let's look at that again so first off this is the new game board um the I think they made the bench and prize card and deck areas a little bit larger, and they also made it more angled, like PTCGO is, instead of feeling very flat. Uh, they also completely changed the game board. Uh, it's much less focused on the hexagon look. Uh, it's still very plain, I'd say, but it's uh, much nicer to look at now. 
And so you see here that we have this fire, this fire kind of theme that takes over the whole thing. The Pokeball looks like crackled and everything looks lava-y. That's really cool. And honestly, if they can make these kinds of things stay based on the stadium that's been played down, that would be super nice. That would really add things and maybe even add some stuff to like the red and the blue because there's a lot of dead space around the corners of the board. Um, but that's really cool. This is awesome for grass with the, the leaves and everything. So like the animation team, I know people have said like maybe the team isn't capable of stuff, but like these are really, really cool. Like this is like a beach with some water around it. Like the art and the designs and the ideas they're using for this stuff is really, really cool. Um, they just didn't implement anything that was cool first. It's like they needed us to ask for nice looking things and then they added these. So I'll just let this play through one more time uh, for y'all to see and give your opinions on it in the comments. But I think all of this looks beautiful. Should have just been in the game from the start. Um, but that's besides the point. I think that all looks amazing. Touching on the pacing of progression rewards noted in the survey results, our internal data review showed that most players used rewards to craft competitive decks before receiving those same cards in the battle pass. As a result, we changed the battle pass so you can earn more in-game currency and receive those cards in earlier tiers. Because of these changes, you no longer have to wait as long to earn powerful cards to complete your deck, and you can enjoy a more diverse crafting experience as you experiment with deck building. This all sounds great, uh, but I, I will come back with my negative thoughts after we finish the note. Um, as development on the limited beta progresses, we've continued to add more regions to help pave the way for the infrastructure to support our players globally. We're excited to continue learning from our community as we roll out to more regions in the next few weeks, with the goal of rolling out the limited beta worldwide by the end of the year. The feedback we've received and continue from all of you has been an integral part of helping create a better game experience. We can't wait to share more about what we're working on next. So, um... They've been doing pretty, uh, pretty regular updates. So we had an update in May, an update in August, and now an update at the beginning of October, um, which for a beta, I think that's fine. Like every two months they're updating us and telling us what to do. Uh, a lot of the frustration from players and the community, I think is because this game was supposed to be out last year. Um, so I don't know how that happened, but overall, it's great that they are communicating and sharing some sort of roadmap with us and also doing this survey process. This is all awesome and definitely what games in beta do and should be doing. So this is all great and it makes the game feel much more like it actually is in beta and not like they were just trying to ship us out a half finished game. Now it looks like they're actually trying to make it good. So that's good. I'm still confused on the whole battle pass and currency thing when they're not trying to make money off the game what's the point in even having all of this i i don't get it i don't know if i ever will get it like if they're not trying to get money from us why even make us grind to get cards like if we can't pay for them so i don't understand that part um now overall what i was kind of alluding to earlier is i feel like they don't have anybody internally like quality checking this stuff or they're not taking like uh focused like no focus groups or anything like that um like when they told myself and a uh like maybe a dozen other or less uh content creators previous to the uh ptcg live being announced uh when they gave us like a little creator preview earlier in the year um it wasn't really to take like feedback and stuff it was just to give us information so i don't know that they ever did any kind of focus group looking for feedback before actually showing this game to the world but i just can't imagine how they allowed the game to look the way it did on release of the beta um, and also now they are planning for a worldwide release of the beta a year after it was supposed to originally be released. So it's been a very bumpy release, a very bumpy beta. 
uh, not a lot of communication off the start from what they wanted to do with this game. But now that they're actually giving us a bit of a roadmap, they're doing the survey, they're showing what they found with the surveys, they're actually acknowledging all of this stuff. And now that they're fixing it, I guess they had to wait and see maybe, maybe like from their management or the people that approve like more work on these projects. They thought that the players would just be fine with it, perhaps. And now that they have all this feedback, they're getting to work on it. They're like, no, nobody likes this game. We have to make it look better. So I'm still confused about the purpose and the goals somewhat behind it. But it's nice that we're at least getting uh, a sort of a roadmap and that they're taking note of the bad things that they had to fix. And it looks like they're trying to make progress and the game looks a lot better. Uh right now in its live version i'll probably do a little bit of a review um looking at some gameplay on ptcg live as well in the near future and talk about stuff but it looks like it's getting better it just sucks that it's still getting better uh bordering on a year after the initial release was supposed to happen i mean these ptcg live was advertised on fusion strike right like just to give you guys a little bit of a an idea of when this game was supposed to be out and playable for everyone so uh yeah the launch was a failure an utter failure but now at least they're taking steps to work on it so we'll see what happens down the road but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and i'll see you next time here on celio's network